we just saw a one-point technique which is the critical path method. The critical path method is what we call a one-point technique because we work with only one possible duration for each specific activity. The program evaluation and review technique, the PERTH method, is a three-point technique. Three-point because we work with three possible durations for each activity. We have an most likely duration for the activity, an optimistic one, and the pessimistic one. So we have three possible durations. So that's the reason why we call it a three-point technique. So for activity A, the most likely duration is four days. But from the not optimistic perspective, this very same activity can be performed in two days. And from a pessimistic point of view, we can perform this activity in nine days. So we have three possible durations for the same activity. We do this for all the activities in our project. Then we establish the expected duration for the activity. And how do we calculate the expected duration? The optimistic duration, two days, plus the most likely duration, four, multiplied by four, 16 plus the pessimistic duration 9 9 plus 16 25 plus 2 27 and then we divide by 6 why by 6 because it's 4 for the most likely duration so the most likely duration have a, a, a bigger uh, weight in the calculation of course because it's the most likely one to happen so 4 one for optimistic and one for pessimistic that makes six so we divide by six and we have the expected time of the activity which is a combination of the three scenarios optimistic most likely and pessimistic here the expected time would be four and a half days then we calculate the standard deviation the standard deviation we find by subtracting the pessimistic 9 with the optimistic 2 so that gives us 7 divided by 6 so this gives us a standard deviation of 1.17 and then we calculate the variance the, the variance we obtain by the square of the standard deviation so the variance will be equal to 1.17 versus multiplied by 1.17. This gives us a variance of 1.36. And we do exactly the same exercise for all the activities. Duration, most likely, optimistic, pessimistic. Expected time, we add the sum of optimistic plus pessimistic Plus, plus most likely multiplied by 4 and we get the standard deviation by dividing this sum by 6 then we calculate the standard deviation and we calculate the variance we apply this for all the activities in the project so activity A will have an expected duration of 4.5 days activity B an expected duration of 8.5 days, activity C 9.9, .9, so on and so forth. For all the sequence of activities in our project. Once we have established duration, optimistic, most likely, and pessimistic, expected time, standard deviation, and variance, we calculate the duration along the critical path what we mean the longest sequence of activities to deliver our project so this represents the sequence of activities with a four and a half days c nine and a half days higher than b of course then e 14 14 and a half days higher than d and G, four days, 
higher than 3.17 days. So we add, we sum the days on the critical path, 4.5, 9.5, 14.5, 4.0, and this gives us a total duration of 32 and a half days along the critical path, the longest path to implement our project. Then we calculate the variance on the basis of the calculations we have made in our table, the variance along the critical path. So 1.36, 2.25, 2.25 and 0 0.44. So that gives us a sum of variance along the critical path of 4.5-94 days. And then we calculate the standard deviation. The standard deviation we find it by the square root of the variance, the sum of the variance. So the square root of 4.94 is 2.22. So now we have not only the number of days along the critical path, the longest amount of time we need to complete our project, 32 and a half days. We have the sum of the variance along the critical path, 4.94 days, and we have the standard deviation, the square root of the sum of the variance, which is 2.22. We can move on to the next exercise. The next exercise is rather complex, but you have to bear in mind that this is used mostly for decision making in the project. Once you have made all these calculations, you have to go to the to Google or any web browser and search for a table of standard normal probabilities for negative z-scores. And you will get a table like this. If you uh, put this on Google, you will immediately will find the, the, the table of standard normal probabilities for negative z-scores. And what does this table give us? When we ask ourselves during implementation, for instance, if your uh, um, sponsor wants to anticipate the completion of the project and it asks you, what is the probability that the pro project finishes in less than 30 days? So our calculation is that we can deliver in 32 and a half days. But you want to know what is the probability of anticipating the completion of the project? How do you calculate that probability? So Z here, it's the probability. X here is the days that we were to trying to find out the probability. Here is 30. And we subtract by the expected duration, which is from the previous exercise we know, 32 and a half days. And then we divide that by the standard deviation that we know already that the standard deviation is the square root of the sum of the variance along the critical path. That gives us a score, a value, which is minus 1.12. We go to the table of standard normal probabilities for negative z-scores because we are trying to find what is the probability to anticipate the completion of the project. So it's, that's the reason why it's for negative z-scores because we know already that we are subtracting a lower value, 30, by the expected duration, which is higher, 32.5. That gives us a negative value, of course, and the negative value in this example is 1.12. We go to the table and we find here the Z, the Z is 1.1, and we cross here with the column 0 0.2 to find the 1.12. 1 1.1, 0 0.02 gives us here a value of 0 0.1340. So it means that the probability that the project finishes in less than 30 days is 13%. Now let's have an example on the other way around for positive scores. Exactly the same example with the same values. And the question being slightly different. What is the probability that the project finishes in less than 37 days? The formula is exactly the same. So what we are trying to find is 
what is the probability that the project finishes in less than 37 days so 37 goes here the expected duration we know already 32 and a half days and we divide again by the standard deviation the square root of the sum of the variance along the critical path and that gives us of course now a positive value because we are trying to find what is the probability that the project finishes in less than 37 days our calculation is that it will finish in 32 and a half but we are trying to know if there are certain delays if we will finish the project in more than 37 days so we div we subtract 37 by the expected duration and divide by the standard deviation and get that gives us a positive value of two and a half 2.02 and then we use a table of standard normal probabilities for positive scores here the value is positive and we go to the z and we see here 2 and we find 0 0.02 0 0.02 here and gives us a value of 0 0.9783 the probability that the project finishes in more than 37 days is two and a half 2.1 percent why because we subtract one by the value we find on the table of standard normal probabilities for positive scores and that gives us this value of 97 so the probability that in fact we finish the project in less than 37 days is in fact 97.8 percent 97.8 percent of probability to finish the project at least in 37 days you see here on the curve this represents 97 percent of probability to finish in at least 37 days and only two percent of probability to finish the project in more than 37 days so of course the perth method is much more complex and also much more comprehensive than in fact the critical path method because it works with three possible durations most likely pessimistic and optimistic once we have three these three dates we obtain the expected duration once we have the expected duration we can calculate the variance and once we have the, the variance we can apply the square root to the, to the variance to obtain the standard deviation and with these three elements expected duration critical path and standard deviation we can always calculate the probabilities to finish the project within the agreement type schedule so it's much more complex much more uh, calculations involved but in, at the end of the day it's much simpler than it looks